Good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me properly? Hello, hi. Hey, yes, we can hear you. OK, very good. Good afternoon, Adnan. All right, good afternoon, everybody, and very welcome to our first IEEE IES webinar in 2021. My name is Amir, and I'm a lecturer of electrical engineering at Mer Merdak University and also serving as the chair of IEEE IESWA chapter. IESWA chapter has been actively engaging, organizing different activities such as technical seminar, webinar, research workshop, and networking event in the past two years. In 2021, we have started with technical seminar and networking event at the end of the March, and we are following with our monthly scheduled webinar until end of this year. So today we are going to have our first technical webinar, and it is my great honor to introduce your speaker, Dr. Hai Wang from Merdak University, Australia, and who is going to deliver a talk on adaptive tracking control of an electronic throttle valve based on recursive terminal sliding mode. Before starting the presentation, I would like to give you a brief bio of our speaker. So Dr. Hai Wang, who is currently senior member of IEEE, received his PhD degree from Swimwear University of Technology Australia in 2014 in robotics and mechatronics engineering. Uh, from 2014 to 2015, he was the postdoctoral research pro in the Faculty of Science, Engineering and Technology at Swinburne University. And then from 2015 to early 2019, he was with the School of Electrical and Automation Engineering and Hefe at Hefei University of Technology, China, where he served as the full professor and the deputy discipline head of automation. Hai is currently the senior lecturer of electrical engineering, academic chair of instrumentation and control and industrial computer engineering, and the director of advanced mechatronics, robotics and control lab at Merdak University, Perth, Australia. Hai has, be, uh, has published 60 peer-reviewed leading international jo journal paper, including 20 plus IEEE transaction, mostly in the areas of nonlinear control theory and in uh, its application, robotics and mechatronics. He currently serves as a section EIC of uh, actuator's journal, associate editor of IEEE Access, SME uh, Journal of Autonomous Vehicles and System, IET, journal, IET Energy Conversion and Economics, and guest editor of Neural Computing and Application and Computers and Electrical Engineering. He was the chair of IEEE Industrial Electronics Society Western Australia chapter in 2020. His research interests are in sliding mode control and observer, adaptive control, robotics and mechatronics, neural networks, nonlinear system, and autonomous vehicles and system. So again, it's my great honor to invite Hai to start his presentation. So Hai, hello and good afternoon. Are you ready to start? Yeah, yeah I'm ready. Thank you. Thanks very much, Amir, for your you, uh, you know, yeah, for your uh, introductions and uh, yeah, so I'm ready for the presentations. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, please share your slide and start. Thank you sure, very much. Thank you. Just before starting, I would like to highlight that we are going to record all our uh, webinar and later on we upload uh, the, or, uh, the recorded file in the YouTube channel of uh, IEEE IESWA chapter, so you can watch the, you know, the webinar later in our YouTube channel. Thank you. Hello, Emilia, can you see my screen? 
Yes, I can just please uh, switch to the presentation mode. Sure, okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hai. I'm from the Modoc University. And uh, as the, you know, my colleague Amy introduced, and uh, today I it's my great honor and uh, it's my uh, play great pleasure to, uh, you know, uh, give all of the uh, you know presentations uh, surrounding my research topics regarding the solidimo control and uh, you know a theory and application and basically this is the today the topic is actually one of my you know uh, is the one of the research done by you know one of my PhD students and me during the past few years and uh, the topic is the uh, adaptive tracking control of an electronic throttle valve Based on recursive terminal slide mode, and uh, from the you know uh, the, the the next few minutes, I'm going to you know introduce my research work you know around this topic, uh, following the following you know uh, following the uh, the outlines, uh, which is you know mathematical modeling of electronic throttle valve system and uh, robust control design based on adaptive recursive terminal, uh, you know, Solanimo technique, and then followed by the experimental results and conclusions. So uh, basically, first of all, we I would like to introduce some of the basic background, you know, about the about the electronic throttle valve. So as everybody knows, uh, at this, you know, these days for from the commercial vehicles, and uh, we are we have already adopted the you know the use of the electronic throttle valve and as you can see from the you know uh, the right uh, the the three figures at the right side of this slide you can see there are three different figures the first one is shows the mechanical structure of the you know the valve and actually this is the very you know the first generation of the traditional uh, you know vehicle uh, throttle and as you can see the you know throat body is directly connected to the mechanical the device and uh, uh, to the you know to the accelerator with a mechanical device so you can see here uh, the link is actually you know made by a uh, you know uh, mechanical you know the linkage and uh, for the second generation of the you know the uh, valve uh, as you can see from the second figure the link you know uh, is is changed to a cable a structure uh, you know from the uh, the mechanical structure in the operation okay and uh, based on the two different generations you can see that the motion from the you know the accelerator pedal will be transferred to the throttle uh, body by using the mechanical structure or the cable structure uh, because you know uh, uh, because of the, you know, the uh, the, the involving uh, mechanical or uh, and cable structure in this, you know, the uh, in this, you know, uh, valve uh, in this valve is not that, you know, convenient and difficult uh, and, you know, uh, you know, intelli intelligent for us to design different kind of controllers to control the throttle uh, body. And the other, you know, important factors is that. Well, you know, the particularly for the first generation of the valve body. So uh, sometimes when the, you know, the uh, driver uh, have different kinds of, you know, the uh, accelerator, you know, motions, it will directly transfer to, to the throttle body. So in this case, when some, you know, uh, in some urgent or, you know, uh, urgent, you know, the uh, road conditions, when the driver, you know, instantly press the, uh, you know, the, uh, the the accelerator pedal. So in this case, it will, you know, uh, instantly generate a stamp, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, motion for transferred from the accelerator pedal to the throttle body. So which will, uh, you know, correspondingly uh, cause to the, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, instability of the vehicle because of the, you know, some of the instant and, uh, you know, urgent motion from the, you know, accelerator pedal. So in this case, uh, following the previous two basic structures, and uh, so electronic throttle valve is, you know, has been created. 
So which is to replace the mechanical uh, structure with wire. So as you can see from the third figure, so this is a thread uh, throughout the body. This is like, you know, the, uh, the, the accelerator pedal and the actually the, uh, you know, the uh, accelerator pedal is link is linked to the throat body by using, you know, uh, uh, wires. And, uh, you know, uh, there's, a, you know, DC motor uh, installed, uh, you know, the, uh, in, in, the, in the internal side of the throat body. And finally, what we need to do is to, is to you know, realize the, you know, uh, the, the better control for the DC motor, which can, you know, correspondingly manu manipulate the motion of the throat body. So actually, the advantages of this kind of structure for using by using the, the electronic throttle valve has this, you know, the uh, has been described uh, from the following three parts. The first one is the reducing fuel consumption and gas emission. Uh, so this is the actually, you know, the uh, because of you know the uh, currently we are using a wire to connect the the accelerator pedal. Uh, to the you know throat body and in this case uh, the real time control for the throat body will be you know optimally uh, realized by the you know the uh, electronic control uh, unit and which will uh, you know consider diff uh, you know uh, many kinds of you know situate you know the uh, uh, you know factors for instance in this case the uh, the throat body will not be directly controlled by the accelerator pedal, and instead it will be, you know, the uh, controlled, uh, you know, comprehensively by based on the, you know, the partial based on this, you know, the uh, the motion of the accelerator pedal and the current operating condition of the engine and the current operating condition of the uh, uh, the real vehicle, as well as the operate, the practical, you know, situation of the, you know, the current air conditions, uh, you know, the uh, in the in the vehicle. Which means, by using the electronic throttle valve, we can combine, you know, many kinds of operating conditions from the real vehicle, and then we can generate, you know, a very optimal, you know, control, uh, perform uh, control signal to control the DC motor. So. Uh, after that, we can ensure that the throttle, the throttle, you know, body can be well controlled. So in this case, we can better reduce the fuel consumption and gas emission. So, so for the second advantage is to reduce high response rate and control improvements. As you can see here, because we have already adopted the DC motor in the system, so in this case, we can, you know, uh, design different kinds of intelligent and robust control methodologies to control the DC motor in order uh, to ensure the throttle body can be well controlled, uh, for, you know, when facing different kinds of, you know, uh, you know, the conditions. And third advantage is to improve the, you know, vehicle drivability and the passenger's comfort. Because in the first generation of the, you know, Volvo, so we have to use a mechanical, a real mechanical structure to connect the mechanic, to, to connect the, you know, the uh, accelerator pedal with, uh, you know, throat body. So in this, uh, when, when we use the, you know, the uh, electronic uh, throttle valve to replace the, you know, the original, you know, uh, valve structure. So in this case, uh, all of the, you know, the, uh, you know the vehicle, the vehicle performance and the passenger comfort will be, you know, better realized uh, by using the, you know, the based on the, you know, uh, the the use of the intelligent control methodology. Okay, uh, that is going to be Im implemented in our, you know, electronic control unit to control the DC motor. So of course, as you can see from the third figure, because of, you know, this is the real you know, structure of the throat, electronic throat valve, uh, you know, used in the commercial vehicle. And uh, it has, you know, it has been introduced, you know, many nonlinearities and uncertainties. So first of all, because we have already adopted once, you know, the spring uh, in the internal side of the, you know, throat body. 
So uh, of course, it will you know induce the spring nonlinearity. So the second you know difficulty is how to you know uh, ensure the you know the better control performance when facing the gear backlash and frictions. Because here we have to adopt you know the uh, uh, complex structure from the gearbox, okay, to you know uh, enlarge the 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 torque, uh, you know the transfer from the motor from the DC motor, uh, you know uh, the output side of DC motor to the you know the throttle body. And third difficulty is from the param uh, parameter and external perturbations from airflow force variations. As you can see. The you know the uh, the valve should be you know directly connected to the, to the engine and when we you know when uh, the airflow force you know uh, coming into the engine okay so we have to ensure that okay the uh, real time control of you know the electronic throttle valve should you know should be guaranteed to have a very robust control performance uh, in terms of uh, you know. Uh, with respect to the parameter and external perturbations, particularly from airflow force. So basically, when a, uh, you know the rear vehicle is up, you know running on the road, so uh, definitely it will you know uh, face you know uh, complex airflow force uh, coming into the engine. So in this case, how can we ensure the robust control performance? Uh, okay. Um, you know uh, when the the electronic throttle valve system is uh, you know uh, having different kinds of parameters and and external perturbations. So actually, these are three different kinds of difficulties you know uh, ex existing in the electronic throttle valve control system. And as as you can see from this you know uh, complex figure, uh, which shows a diagram of an electronic throttle valve control system. So uh, now the uh, prob, you know the uh, question rises, which is what affects high precision control for a real-time electronic you know valve system? So as you can see from this figure, this figure gives a very basic structure of an electronic throttle valve control system. So uh, the electronic throttle uh, you know uh, uh, valve system uh, includes an accelerator pedal, an electronic throttle valve body and an electronic control unit. So basically these are three important you know, components in the system. Particularly for the electronic throttle valve body, as you can see from you know, uh, this part of the figure, uh, consists of a DC motor, uh, consists of DC motor, which is given, uh, uh, okay, and a uh, dual return swing, which is given here, and the gearbox, which is given here, and the position sensor set and the valve plate. So, as you, uh, you know, this is other, you know, uh, basic components for the elect electronic throttle valve body. And uh, the electronic plate motion actually is constrained by the dual, you know, return spring, which is given here, and uh, the purpose of the you know dual return screen is to return the plate into the initial position, namely the limb uh, home position, uh, which can allow the driver to uh, you know limp home uh, which, uh, you know the or to the nearest auto you know the repair uh, uh, repair station. So actually, this is the very or you know the uh, default you know, structure for the you know for the uh, valve body, and. Uh, the reference, you know, operate opening angle and the actual, the uh, which is given here, theta d, and the uh, actual opening angle, which is given here, uh, denoted as theta t, are measured by potential meters inside the accelerator pedal and the throttle body, respectively. So basically, this is the, you know, the measurements for, for the input signal and the output signal. And the voltage signals. Which is given here, okay, are converted from the aforementioned measurements from the inputs and outputs, okay, and, subse uh, and subsequently fed into the you know electronic control unit. So after an appropriate air fuel you know uh, mixture to be fed into the actual engine is determined by the you know ECU, 
the corresponding control voltage signal will be calculated and transferred to the you know DC motor through the PWM module, which is okay, uh, which is given uh, you know in this you know structure. So finally, the you know valve plate which is given here will be driven by the DC motor through the gearbox to follow the reference opening angle, which is given here, denoted by theta d. So as you can see from the you know the basic uh, you know, principle of the electronic throttle valve. We can, we have to know that there are different kinds of disturbances and parameter non and nonlinearities, okay, existing in the systems. For instance, the airflow disturbance, aerodynamics, parametric variations, and the measure and the measurement, you know, measurement noises. Okay, so uh, now the 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 basic control objective for you know the uh, the, the ETV system is to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the our output, you know, the open, you know, the actual opening angle of the throat body can be, can closely follow the given reference angle, which is theta d given here, and with with respect to the, you know, uh, complex nonlinearities and disturbances existing existing in the system. So this is our, you know, basic control target, and from now on, I will, you know, gradually uh, analyze how to design, uh, you know, robust control methodology based on the slightly mode technique. So first of all, so when we, you know, have a one, you know, mechatronic system, so first of all, we have to know that how to model, the, you know, the system, and how to use different kinds of you know, model, uh, math, you know, modeling, you know, um, you know, techniques to model our system. So as we, you know, uh, analyze for most of the second order, you know, mechatronic system, we can, you know, normally uh, model all those second, uh, all those, you know, the second order system by using a second, uh, you know, second order, uh, you know, differential equation. So that which gives our, you know, uh, our the first order, uh, our first equation, which is given here. So, which means the integrated plant model of the electronic throttle valve system can be modeled by a second order differential equation given by equation one. So, in this equation, you can see there are you know a couple a couple of you know uh, parameters, which is m n, okay, and uh, in this equation m and n. Uh, corresponds to the moment of inertia of the you know the the system and damping coefficient of the system as well and in this system we know that theta d is output you know the opening uh, uh, opening angle of the throat body and uh, the air is actually relates to the you know the uh, the external disturbance and uh, you know the, the dl is actually uh, you know, uh, relates to the you know external uh, disturbance, and TL is actually the combination of the you know the uh, the uh, spring you know uh, torque and the friction torque uh, together. Okay, so uh, UT is actually here is a control voltage input uh, you know provided to the system. So uh, basically, in this work. We consider the following parametric variations in equation one and two as follows. Because as everybody knows, from you know, for most of the control real-time control system, okay. So uh, when the system uh, when the system is you know is operating, so uh, definitely for the whole system will experience you know parametric variations, okay, for uh, different you know uh, scenarios. So in this case. It's better for us to model the system, okay, by considering the parametric variations in the mathematical modeling in advance. So that's the reason why we can, you know, we consider, you know, the, all those, you know, parameters and all those parameters existing in the system, uh, you know, uh, which should be composed of two different parts. Uh, the first part is the M0, N0, okay, which is you know denoted as zero, uh, in indicating the nominal uh, parameters. 
Okay, and the second part is the delta m, delta n, etc. So for the second part is you know denoted is is denoted as the you know the uh, variations for those parameters. Okay, so uh, after we model you know those parameters composed of two different parts, nominal part and uncertain parts. So in this case, it will be it will it will uh, be very convenient for us to design the control uh, method the 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 control approach for uh, our for our you know our ETV system. So before we design the real time you know uh, uh, control system, we have to derive the you know error dynamics. Okay. So first of all, we have to de define the position tracking error as follows. So et is equal to uh, theta t minus theta d. So it's, uh, theta d actually, actually here is given uh, by the you know desired pedal command, which is directly you know the uh, generated by the accelerator pedal. And theta d is actually you know uh, is is the desired pedal command, and theta t is actually the actual opening angle of the throttle uh, you know body of the throttle plate. So here we, uh, you know, have to, we have to, you know, first ensure that the, you know the reference uh, theta d should be twice differentiable as theta d dot dot. Okay. So after we have the those, you know, preliminary information, we can, you know, the correspondingly obtain the aerodynamics given by equation uh, equation nine. So which is e dot e t dot dot is equal to u t minus n zero times theta t dot minus t delta zero over m zero minus t long uh, minus theta d dot dot. So actually here, t delta zero is actually the nominal uh, part of the of the you know the uh, spring uh, of the friction and and the spring torque. Okay. So in this you know uh, expression, f delta zero, tau delta zero, and k delta zero can be you know uh, uh, known by uh, using the system identification method for the system, okay, from uh, for the system. And T lump here actually indicates the lumped, you know, uh, disturbance, you know, existing in the system. As you can see here, this is a very complex, you know, the, uh, you know, the uh, lumped disturbance expression, which is, uh, you know, includes, you know, uh, delta F delta, Delta dot tau delta and delta k delta and delta m delta n. So air for all of the you know the uh, unknown portions uh, which includes delta, okay. So is uh, is very difficult to obtain for a practical application. So in this case, how can we design a real time you know uh, control uh, system to ensure a robust and excellent tracking control performance with respect to you know uh, those parametric uncertainties and disturbances so this is the you know the uh, the, the most significant significant difficulty when we design the control system okay as you can see in particular as you can see from this disturbance uh, lumped disturbance expression uh, is is uh, you know has included uh, you know second uh, derivative of the you know the output you know uh, signal which is theta t dot dot. So actually, uh, as everybody knows, when this you know the system includes this uh, you know the second derivative of the output signal, okay, so it will be very difficult and uh, it will be you know uh, very inconvenient uh, for us to design the. You know the control system because when the second derivative of the output signal is involved, okay, so it will be exaggerated, exaggerated based uh, for uh, based on the original you know angle measurements, okay, because of the you know because uh, you know lots of noises will be involved when we do the second derivative of the output signal. So in this case, how can we avoid to you know, uh, or how can we get rid of you know the second derivative of the output signal, including in the lumped uncertainty you know expression, 
and then we can uh, you know suitably design the uh, real-time control system okay so that uh, which comes uh, to the second part uh, to the following part which is the disturbance property and analysis so as has been proved in one of the references in uh, you know, uh, in uh, for uh, from the paper I published in 2014, and if the closed loop control signal U is upper bounded by the following poly uh, polynomial function, which is which is given here, if the U, if the absolute, if if the absolute value of the control signal U is less than okay, uh, epsilon epsilon zero plus epsilon one uh, times uh, absolute value of the theta t plus epsilon t uh, two times the absolute value of theta t dot, which means if the closed loop control signal u is upper bounded by the following, you know, polynomial function, which includes only the or you know the original output signal theta t and the only in the first derivative of the output signal theta t, okay. And then the lumped ancillary can be upper bounded as follows, which is given by uh, expression 11, which is T lumped, okay, is less than D, okay, bar is equal to D0 plus D1 times theta T, uh, the absolute value of theta T plus D2 times uh, uh, the absolute value of theta T dot, okay? So in this case, we can easily obtain the lumped ancillary can be upper bounded by this polynomial equation, which only includes the original output angle and the first derivative of the uh, or of the original output angle, which is the angular velocity. Okay. So by using this kind of you know disturbance property, you know transformations. Okay, we can easily uh, avoid to use. The you know to include the second derivative of the output signal in the in the upper bound of the lumped ancillary. Okay, so in this case, it will be very easy for us to design the control system without you know involving uh, any you know uh, noises uh, from the you know this from the derivative calculation. Okay, and for the express for the expression eleven. You can see that there are three different, you know, constants. Or there are three different constants: d0 and d1 and d2. Okay. So in the following part, I will guide you to 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 uh, to see how can we design, okay, these those con those constants, and if those positive constants are not, uh, you know, easy to obtain for practical application. So which, uh, how can we uh, use uh, you know the uh, other control, uh, other you know uh, mechanisms to uh, you know the uh, adaptively estimate you know those uh, pr those parameters uh, in our real time control system. So this is actually uh, you know uh, uh, can be put in one of the you know uh, in, uh, good questions for all of you. Okay, and now let's come to the real uh, the, the 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 structure of the you know the our slide mode controller so before we design the slide mode controller so we have to define okay a, a slide mode variable so in this work we have defined a recursive inter, uh, integral terminal slide mode variable, variable as equation uh, 12 so which is st is equal to sigma t plus lambda t times sigma i t Okay, so in this you know sliding variable, there is one sliding parameter which is lambda t. Okay, and sigma t is actually the second level of the sliding variable. So here we define the sigma t is equal to e dot plus k1 times e t plus k2 times e t uh, with the power of alpha times psi. Okay, so as you can see from this you know. Uh, equation 12 and 13. So basically, these two equations gives the you know the sliding you know uh, function uh, definitions. So in this work, we define two different 
we defined you know starting uh, functions with two with two different you know levels. The first level uh, starting function is defined as st is equal to sigma t plus lambda t times sigma i. Actually, sigma i is the integration of the you know this part. So uh, so this is the you know the original starting you know uh, function definition. As you can see from equation 12 and 13, I used the lambda hat and the k1 hat and the k2 hat, you know, for those two different equations, two two different, you know, uh, sliding uh, function definitions, which means in the following parts, all those parameters will be online estimated by the following adaptive rules. Okay, so the purpose of the you know designing those adapt adaptive rules to adaptively estimate those sliding parameters is to you know make our control design more convenient and much more easier for our control design control designers okay to uh, you know the uh, tune the parameters because for most of the sliding mode control you know the applications and it's not that easy for us to tune the sliding parameters. So in this case, we are considering to use, you know, the adaptive, you know, mechanisms, okay, to adaptively adjust all those parameters for our real-time control system. So as you can see from equation 15, 16, and 17, okay, all of the three sliding parameters will be adaptively adjusted or adaptively estimated in uh, in the sense of layup north okay and uh in order to you know ensure that our closed loop control uh closed loop aerodynamics can be you know uh, driven to zero or can be driven to the sliding uh to the sliding you know the uh service in a finite time and after that we can easily ensure that the output you know aerodynamics will be driven to zero in a finite time, okay? And the reason uh, to include, to, you know, design the integral, uh, integral, uh, you know, a portion in a sliding uh, variable is to, you know, uh, increase, is to, you know, the, uh, to, to make sure that our sliding uh, surface can be, you know, uh, obtained, can be obtained when the system operates at the very beginning, okay, by based on, you know, uh, by uh, adjusting the, you know, the initial, uh, the initial value of the sigma i. So this is one of the, you know, uh, most significant merit uh, for our, you know, control system, okay. As you can see from this, you know, figure two, which is shows the block diagram of, of the proposed adaptive recursive terminal slide mode control scheme. So as you can see from this scheme, we have two different sliding surfaces. Okay, so this is the uh, you know the first level sliding surface, and this is the second level sliding surface. And uh, after we design sliding surface, we design the you know the sliding the uh, the adaptive the adaptive recursive terminal sliding mode control uh, signal, and in the in the uh, you know sliding mode control law, we uh, have to you we have used you know the adaptive laws to adaptively adjust all those sliding parameters, as well as the lumped uncertainty bound. As you can see from equation 23, so the previous you know uh, mentioned the lumped uncertainty bound, which is given in this equation, right? D zero plus D one times theta t plus d2 times theta t dot. So in our controls, designed control system, okay, so all those, you know, positive constants and, and non-positive constants will be, you know, adaptively estimated by using the adaptive laws given uh, from 24 to 26, right? So in this case, so we don't need to spend too much time for tuning the you know the sliding mode parameters as well as the unknown you know uh, constants uh, from the you know the lumped uncertainty bounds, and instead we 
have used, you know, a bunch of the, slide, the adaptive laws to, you know, adaptively adjust all those sliding, more pra sliding parameters as well as the unknown uncertainty, you know, uh, constants uh, for our control systems. So as you can see from equation 15, 16, and 17, and 24, 25, and 26. So we are using six different adaptive laws to adaptively estimate the sliding mode parameter and the lumped uncertainty bounds with three different unknown uh, you know, uh, constants. Okay, so in this case, our you know control system will be uh, dramatically you know uh, the 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 difficulty of the design for this our control system will be dramatically reduced. Okay, and by using the adaptive you know uh, laws included in the control system makes our control system more intelligent because our all of the parameters no need to uh, to you know to tune for practical application, it will be automatically and online estimated, you know, when the system, you know, is running, okay? So now I would like to share with all, all of you with, you know, uh, some important remarks. So for the uh, real, for the application, for the adaptive control, I believe everybody knows for in term, in the theory part, there's no problem because in the theory part, we can, uh, ensure that our sliding variable, okay, which is S, can be insured, can be, you know, uh, can convert to zero uh, in uh, in a finite time, okay. However, in the practical application, uh, because we cannot guarantee the sliding var variable can convert to zero, because for the practical system, we can. You know, the, we have to use different kinds of sensors for measure the, you know, the output signal and input signal, okay? And uh, in this case, we cannot ensure our sliding variable can be, can convert to zero in a finite time. So we can only ensure our sliding variable can convert to a very, you know, small, uh, you know, the uh, region, all right? So in this case, if we are still adopting all those adaptive laws for practical application, it will definitely, you know, the uh, uh, you know introduce or cause par uh, parameter bursting. So in this case, for avoiding the, pra uh, the parameter drifting and for avo avoiding parameter bursting, we are going to use the following dead zone modification methods. Okay, for you know uh, in the adaptation process. So, which means the we are you we are going to use all you know these design modifications to modify the you know the uh, the adaptation uh, you know uh, process uh, for our control system. So, uh, and one of the most important you know the uh, tasks for us is to determine the threshold you know values for all those you know. Uh, uh, parameters. So in this case, and my, you know, the recommend recommendation is to, you know, you have to, uh, you have to, you know, uh, have, you know, uh, a couple of, you know, trials, uh, experimental trials, okay, and to uh, get the best, you know, the threshold thresh out values for our, you know, uh, parameters. For our parameters, okay, and uh, in order to ensure that our, you know, the uh, the real time, uh, the closed loop control system, uh, the control performance can be well ensured, and we can still guarantee it. All we we can still guarantee all those parameters can be, you know, uh, can converge to a, you know, uh, to to a, you know, the a uh, very small region, okay, based on the dead zone modification methods, okay. So this is the, you know, for different kinds of for different kinds of system, definitely all those threshold threshold values will be different. So in this case, you have to rely on the, you know, the uh, the the output dynamics of the 
the system you are currently working on, and then you will have to, you know, uh, to do many experiments, okay, to determine, uh, you know, more suitable threshold uh, threshold values in order for us to, you know, get the uh, excellent, you know, output, you know, performance for our control system. And for avoiding chattering phenomena, okay, we are going to use the uh, the following continuous saturation function, okay, which is given here. And uh, in this function, we are using the saturation function to replace the original sine function, uh, uh, you know, uh, in order to make sure that our control signal is completely smooth, okay? So in the saturation function, the boundary layer thickness is set as 0 0.05. So when determining the, the the value of data, okay, which is the boundary layer thickness, we have to consider a compromise between the output tracking accuracy and the control input smoothness. So actually, this is the trade-off. So when the you know when uh, for in terms of the you know practical application, we have to uh, when we tune the parameter data. Okay, we have to consider this kind of trade-off in order to um, ensure our tracking accuracy is acceptable, and in order to ensure that our you know control input smooth, smoothness can be uh, where can be good enough. Okay, and the other remark is for our control system because of the uh, we have uh, introduced integrate uh, uh, integral action in the design control sy uh, system, which means the sliding variable will equal to zero when t equal to zero, such that the control system will be ideally maintained on the sliding mode service at all time. So because of this particular feature for our control system, so for practical applications, however, for, pra for practical applications, due to the inclusion of the unpredicted uncertainties and disturbances, the closed loop, you know, the control system may again leave the sliding mode. So in this case, we still keep our reaching control term in the control law, which is given in equation 21, which is which is given here. And in order to reject the disturbance. So finally, to sum up, our control law is composed of three different you know, components. Component one, U0, is actually corresponds to the nominal part, okay, nominal portion. Because in this, you know, uh, control component, we normally we, we normally use the, the nominal uh, uh, parameter, which is M0, M0, and T delta 0, okay. And the second control portion is U1, which is I just mentioned. This is the, we call it, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, reaching uh, control, you know, component, which is to reject the, you know, the, the disturbance when the sliding mode is leaving the, when the, uh, you know, the closed loop aerodynamics is leaving the error, is leaving, is leave, is leaving the, you know, the sliding mode. So after we design this control component, it will, you know, strongly you know, pull the, the, the air, closed loop aerodynamics back to the sliding mode. And this is the U2, is actually the switching component. So based on the three different components, based on combination of the three different components, we can better ensure the output tracking performance and the robustness of the whole, you know, closed loop control system. Okay, so now uh, I'm very, uh, this is the, you know, the, uh, the the real time you know set uh, the experimental platform okay as you can see from this paper this is a power supply <coughs> electronic throat body and which includes the accelerator pedal and this is the you know the motor driver uh, this is the this has the DSP okay actually this is the very uh, uh, you know the uh, basic experimental setup uh, built by one of my PhD students. And uh, uh, so, uh, by using this experimental, you know, setup, this will be very easy for us to uh, verify and, you know, implement our proposed 
Israeli mole control methodologies. Okay. So uh, for the comparison purpose, we also designed the adaptive integral terminal sliding mode control methods. The, uh, the traditional adaptive sliding mode uh, control methods, okay, uh, for the comparison purpose, which is given in equation 32 and equation 37. So for a fair comparison purpose, we are also keeping all those two, you know, control, uh, control uh, laws uh, having the adaptive mechanisms. As you can see from equation 32, the, you know, the parameter, the sliding variable is equal to E dot plus, okay, exhibiton, uh, exhibiton A1 times E plus exhibiton A2 times E integral times E, okay? So you can, as you can see, the two integral, uh, the two sliding um, the parameters are also updated based on the adaptive laws given by uh, 34 and 35. Okay, and similarly for the adaptive sliding mode control law given in equation 37. Okay, and the sliding parameter beta 1 and beta alpha 1 are also adaptively estimated based on adaptive laws given in, in equation 39 and, and 40. So uh, this table 1 gives the nominal parameters of the electronic throttle valve system. And actually, all those parameters are, you know, have been obtained based on the preliminary system ident identification, you know, experiments. Okay, uh, on our experimental setup. And table two gives the controller parameters. So controllers are, you know, includes purpose, purpose, purpose control, ASM control, and. A, a, a adaptive integral terminal slide mode control. Okay, as you can see, all the parameters are given here. So, in order to, uh, you know, better show the, you know, the ex, uh, uh, the excellent and robust control performance of the uh, our design control system, we are going to use three different scenarios. Okay, case one, trapezoidal trajectory tracking. Take case two. Sinusoidal trajectory tracking. Case three, disturbance rejection capability. So actually, all those three different cases are quite popular for you know the verifications for the you know the tracking control of the mechatronic system. For instance, the uh, the tracking control of the electronic motor, the tracking control of the uh, you know the uh, robots. And the tracking control of the, you know, the uh, uh, some of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the systems in the vehicles. So actually, we uh, we popularly use those three different cases, okay, for verifying the robustness and the tracking performance of the system. So now I would like to, you know, uh, describe the following you know experimental results for all of you so actually this is a tracking performance of the proposed control in trapezoidal uh, trajectory tracking as you can see this is the the uh, blue line indicates the reference pedal angle and dotted uh, the the red line indicates the actual throttle angle as you can see from the first tracking curve so the actual throttle opening angle can closely follow the reference pedal angle. So this is the tracking error. This is a control voltage. And this, the, the uh, figure D1 and figure D2 uh, shows show us the updated parameters for all those, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, parameters. For instance, D1 gives the sliding mode parameter, sliding mode parameter, uh, you know, uh, estimations. So, which is lambda hat, k1 hat, and the k2 hat, and d2, uh, you know, gives the updated parameters for the, uh, you know, three unknown uh, constants uh, from the lumped uncertainty bounds, which is d0 hat, d1 hat, and d2 hat. Okay. As you can see, that all of the six, you know, parameters are adaptively estimated when the system you know, it's continuously running, okay? 
the, the with owning target that the closed loop aerodynamics can be driven to the you know the slide mode uh, service and then the closed loop aerodynamics can can be you know can convert to zero uh, in a finite time okay so this is the only target so for the comparison purpose tracking performances of of the adaptive integral terminal slide mode in case one as you can see uh, for the first comparative uh, control methods the control performance is not as good as our proposed control okay the tracking error is slightly worse than the one of our proposed control. And this uh, slide gives you the tracking responses of the adaptive slide mode control in case one. So uh, uh, apparently, okay, so we can see that the, uh, the actual throttle angle cannot exactly follow the reference pedal angle by using the ASM control, particularly when the system you know is uh, running at the very first beginning it takes a uh, you know a bit long time for the whole system to adaptively learn the system learn the system dynamics and then okay uh, it's, it's quite it's a bit long for our control system particularly it's a bit long for our adaptive law to adaptively learn okay the system dynamics and then after around you know uh, uh, seven to eight seconds it can you know uh, you know convert it can follow the reference pad angle okay so this is the tracking responses of the asm control which definitely cannot uh, compete with the uh, the one of our proposed control so for the case two which is sinusoidal signal tracking Similarly, the, uh, for our proposed control, the actual uh, throttle opening angle can exactly or you know, uh, well follow uh, you know, the reference pedal angle. Okay. And for the, you know, the two compar com uh, comparative you know, control methods and uh, the, the, the adaptive integral terminal slalom control as, is okay, still okay but not as good as the one our proposed control. And similarly, for the adaptive slide mode control methods, okay, the, uh, the, track, the, uh, the tracking is, 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 is a bit uh, is, you know, unsatisf unsatisfactory, and the tracking error is within two degrees. Okay? However, for the, you know, uh, the adaptive integral term terminal slide mode control, the tracking error is uh, around is within 1. Uh, 1.6 or 1.7 degrees. However, for our proposed control, the tracking error is uh, definitely, uh, you know, uh, smaller. Okay, it's around within uh, one uh, within one degree. Finally, for the case three, is to call the uh, disturbance rejection capability experiment. So, because for our system, as you can see from our experimental setup given here, our experiment, our elect electronic throttle valve is not connect connected to the actual engine of the vehicle. So, in this case, it's not easy or e it is even impossible for us to, you know, uh, to, to generate the, the, the real airflow disturbance, okay, to the system. However, we, uh, if uh, we still want to, you know, uh, test the robustness of the, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the control system. So in this case, we have, we have borrowed some of the popular, you know, methods for the you know the uh, robustness uh, you know verifications uh, from the experimental uh, you know the from the experiments now we are using the electronic disturbance which means we have to put we have to add a electronic you know disturbance signal which is composed of a, you know a portion of the control signal and a, po a plus uh, the a portion of the you know the uh, output signal and a portion of the you know 
uh, the, uh, the 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 first derivative of the outputs, you know, of the system outputs. So by using this method, we can still verify the robustness of the you know the control system by using the uh, by uh, you know adding the electronic disturbance signal to the control input. So this is the this method particularly used in verifying the you know the uh, control robust robustness of the electric motor. Okay. So in the future, if some of you are doing research on the electric motor or you know the uh, the robust control for for uh, the mechanic system, if your system is not that you know uh, comprehensive or your if your you know system is uh, still you know uh, implemented in the hardware in the loop platform in this case i strongly recommend you to you know uh, to use the you know this kind of methods for the verifications of the robustness of the control system okay and as you can see from these figures uh, even when we uh, you know the uh, add the electronic disturbance to the system Okay, the out the actual throttle angle can still follow the reference pedal angle very closely. Okay, which indicates the strong robustness of the whole system. For the tracking responses of adaptive sliding mode control in case three, as you can see, uh, by in involving the disturbance, electronic disturbance to the system, okay, both of the adaptive sliding mode control and the adaptive integral sliding control can not achieve the excellent tracking performance. So, which indicates our proposed method is the most, you know, excellent and is the, you know, uh, most robust, you know, uh, in terms of the tracking, in terms of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the whole, you know, uh, performance of the system. Okay, and finally, uh, as you can see from the previous experimental curves, we can apparently see see the you know the, uh, the 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 tracking performance of our proposed control is better, a lot better than the ones of the adaptive integral terminal slalom control and adaptive slalom control method, respectively. However, uh, for the you know experimental implementations particularly in our you know paper publications most of the review, uh, reviewers uh, you know uh, recommend us to you know utilize some of the performance evaluation criteria to help the readers or to indicate the readers uh, you know that our proposed control is you know uh, you know clearly better than the ones of the compar comparative you know, controllers by using the you know uh, some you know data uh, comparisons. So here we are utilizing the uh, you know the root mean square errors and maximum errors of mm, uh, you know uh, for the comparison purpose. As you can see from table three, we can see that particularly in case three. Our proposed control has made 60% of the improvements from for the maximum uh, maximum value of the error and 59% of the improvements for the uh, root mean square of the error compared with the adaptive integral terminal slider mode control in case three. So actually, these improvements are. Uh, definitely very significant. And in case three, in case three, and for you know uh, our proposed control has made 90, uh, 69.5 percent improvement in terms of the maximum uh, 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 maximum you know uh, value of the error and. 80.5 percent of the improve, uh, improvements uh, in terms of the uh, root mean square you know values of the error compared with the adaptive sliding mode control methods. So basically, those improvements 
a particular, uh, you know, uh, very significant. So, which means our proposed control methods is quite excellent and quite robust. Uh, from the theory part, from the, from and from the exper experimental, you know, verifications. So now I would like to give the, you know, the a very simple conclusion for today's talk. So based on the design of the you know, the adaptive recursive integral terminal slot mode control methodology, we can guarantee the finite time convergence for the modern electro uh, electronic throttle valve system with uncertainties and disturbances. Because of introducing an integral term in the sliding mode, we can, you know, theoretically eliminate the reaching force. And because we are using the adaptive mechanism to adaptively estimate the lumped uncertainty bound and sliding mode parameters, our control, you know, structure will be dramatically reduced, which will significantly facilitate our of the control engineers to design the real-time controllers for uh, the for the you know the electronic system and finally because of the above mentioned methods introduced in the system we can successfully obtain the good tracking performance and strong robustness so those are the references you know uh, used in this, you know, work. Actually, this work has been, you know, published in IEEE Transactions on the Vehicle Technology in 2000, in 2020. And uh, uh, in the future, if some of you are very interested in this kind of methods and would like to, uh, would uh, would like to, you know, uh, uh, discuss with me, I I will be very happy to, you know, uh, to make any. Uh, to have any discussion with all of you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, listening. And uh, if you have any question, please feel free to, uh, you know, uh, to to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hai, for your very interesting presentation uh, with the practical insight based on the you know, a strong uh, theoretical design and calculation. So uh, I would also like to invite our uh, participant to ask their question if there is any. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. So uh, if any of you have any question regarding the, you know, mechatronic systems, uh, in regarding the sliding mode control methodology, uh, in terms of theory and applications, uh, Please feel free to ask. I will be very happy to uh, to 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 share my uh, knowledge with you. Thank you. Thank you, Hi. So, if there is any question, please feel free to ask. We are here for the Q and A session. Hi, could you please go to the presentation mode? Thank yeah, you. sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Presentation mode? Yes, yes. Okay. Just, thank you. Yes, we have uh, Vishal. So, Vishal, please start your question, asking your question. All right, thank you. So, Vishal, do you have any question? Because you raised hand, your hand up. So please unmute your mic and feel free to ask your question. Okay, I don't know what's the problem with the Vishal. Is there any question, Alex? Your mic is, uh, you know, off. Please unmute and ask your question. Good afternoon to everyone. 
Uh, um, Alice, I have two questions for the for Professor Doctor High. Yep, yep. Please, no uh, yeah. Uh, can we please, uh, since your slides are not numbered, can you go where equation 25 is located? Mm, 27 is located? Uh, okay, equation 27. 27. Okay. 27, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. Please. Yeah. Uh, I wrote, uh, I read there for avoiding parameter bursting on the following dead zone modification. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please, I want to know more again about the phenomena of parameter bursting and what is all about uh, dead zone. Okay. Know. Yeah. So okay, in this okay. case, you know, the uh, I can give you some, you know, detailed explanations in terms of the, you know, uh, the uh, as you can see from the uh, equation 24 to 26. Okay. Because here we are adopting the absolute value of the uh, stratum variable st, right? And in theory, part uh, even when you do the simulations, is there's no, uh, there's not any problem. Uh, you know, for the parameter bursting, because in the theory part, the sliding, you know, uh, we can ensure that ST can convert to zero when we do simulations, right? However, when we implement the control system in the, you know, our actual, actual you know, system, and as the sliding variable, the sliding service cannot be, you know, well obtained based because of the you know, the uh, noises included in the measurements, okay? And in this case, we cannot guarantee ST uh, converts to zero for the practical applications, which means ST will uh, definitely will have some certain values. So, which means when the systems, you know, uh, operates continu continuously, the ST will be, the absolute value will uh, of ST will be continuously increasing. So in this case, okay. we uh, when the system continues continuously, you know, uh, running, so D0 hat, D1 hat, and D2 hat will be continuously increasing because here we have to do some integrations, right? Uh, okay. For the right right side of the, this equation in order to obtain D0 hat, D1 hat, and D2 hat. So in this case, Definitely, when a system is continuously running, the parameter bursting or parameter drifting will be definitely, you know, uh, happened. Okay. So that's the reason why we need to use, uh, you know, some kinds of, you know, dead zone modifications to modify the proposed adaptive laws, and which means within the, you know the uh, suitable range of the you know the uh, threshold okay the uh, the adaptive law will not uh, you know uh, work anymore and outside of this range the adaptive mechanism will uh, you know continuously uh, work so which will help us to avoid the uh, the parameter bursting particularly for the practical applications thank you Yep, no worries. So, uh, so am I clear? Can I, can I ask? Can, yeah, it's okay. It's okay for me. Can okay. I can I ask another question, please? Y yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, please. You mentioned uh, you advise us to use when working on control yeah. in order to test the robustness of the system. Yeah. Uh, to carry out uh, this uh, electronic disturbance. Yes. You, you mentioned electronic disturbance. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, at that time, I, did, I didn't get you very well when explaining how to to operate because okay. I, I'm not sure that I got it very well, but you mentioned that we should mm. use the output and its first derivative, okay. am I right? Okay, no problem. Yeah, so thanks thanks for your question because this is the quite popular method uh, when you are, you know, using the hardware in the loop, you know, uh, simulation platform. And sometimes when a reviewer, you know, uh, ask you to, uh, verify the robustness of the system. If in this case it's impossible for us to add a real disturbance, right? So uh, yeah. and instead we are going to use the uh, to to add the electronic disturbance to the system. So for instance, for for this you know our system, uh, we can use like the uh, we can adopt the following disturbance you know uh, electronic disturbance you know expression as uh, you know the d 
uh, is equal to 0 0.8 times u. u here is the control input plus 0 yeah. 0.2 times theta t. Theta t is actual output plus 0 0.3 times theta t dot. Theta t dot here is the, you know, the angular velocity of the output, yeah. right? So basically this is the very simple expression of the, you know, the, uh, you know, which includes the, uh, the, the, the constant, which includes the, you know, the output and the first de derivative of the output. So which means that this kind of electronic disturbance is not constant because it's relates to the outputs, right? So in this case, okay. this kind of electronic disturbance will correspondingly relates to the, you know, the system dynamics. So by using this electronic system, you know, disturbance expression, we can partially verify the robustness of the system. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay. because for thank the you, practical, you, for answer. the practical application, the some uh, most cases the actual disturbance is some you know uh, mostly relates to the systems uh, uh, dynamics or the actual constants. Sometimes uh, you know the uh, is reflected as a constant. So in this case, that's reason why we are we have used used this kind of expression to you know generate the uh, 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 electronic uh, you know disturbance you know expression okay okay all right yeah thanks thank you. yeah cheers thank you thank you very much for your detailed answer hi huh? so yeah, i no think worries. we shall type uh, his question in the chat box can you have yes. a look and answer to it thank you uh, okay so i have to switch the uh... yeah just go to the chat box oh yeah so thank you very much for the presentation. The integral term includes the overall disturbance of the system which eliminates the tracking error with time. Okay, so what's the, uh, what's the question? Integral term into, into overall disturbance of the system. Mm. Integral term C to I. I usually miss the tracking all this time. So yeah, because you know, as you can see from this uh, slice, uh, we have used one integral component, okay, uh, in the sliding variable, which is given here, lambda, uh, which is theta i, and theta i is actually is equal to to the theta t with the power of beta times sine. Actually, here the integral component is only relates to the you know the the uh, sliding. Uh, sliding, you know, the function, sigma t, all right? And sigma t is equal to, uh, you know, is, is uh, designed following the form of equation 13. Here, the only two parameters uh, are k1 hat and k2 hat. So in this case, and because we have introduced we have introduced the, you know, the integration for the sliding in, in the sliding variable, and by, you know, adjusting the initial value of sigma i, uh, I zero is equal to minus lambda hat with the power of, with the power of minus one zero times sigma zero, and by adjusting the, you know, the initial value of the, you know, uh, sigma i zero, we can, you know, uh, easily ensure the sliding variable can be equal to zero at very first beginning. So basically this is the, you know, the advantage of uh, introducing the sliding or the, the integral component in a sliding function. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I, I got it. Yeah, no, no problem. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks Pai, for yeah. your answer. Uh, is there any more question? Yes, please feel free to ask your question.
So hi, may I ask a question? Yeah, sure, definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so sure. my question is about the saturation level of the, you know, the DC motor actuator. Uh, yeah. Have you uh, encapsulated uh, this one in your uh, sliding mode formulation or you just, uh, you know, uh, making sure that you are uh, below the saturation level by this design? OK, uh, thank you very much uh, for AMS question, because this is a quite, you know, uh, uh, you know, the important and interesting, you know, uh, work. And uh, for some of the, you know, slider modes, uh, some of the research papers, and uh, they are uh, which are focusing on the, you know, saturation, uh, which uh, which are, you know, during the, you know, sliding mode control with uh, for the system with, you know, input saturation. So uh, actually, for our system, we are not considering the you know the saturation in, in from our theory part, okay? And uh, uh, in our system, uh, for partic particularly for the real time implementation, we are using the you know you know the uh, the, the satu saturation limit from the uh, you know MATLAB simulink of, of of from the output from the output of of the you know control input. Uh, uh, the, the the U, which means we are you know uh, manually set the limit for our control input, okay, within a very proper range. For instance, the U uh, here is a control voltage. We can we are manu manually setting the range of the control uh, voltage within, uh, for instance, 10, uh, 10, uh, minus 10 to 10 volt, okay, uh, to ensure that our you know, control input is, you know, uh, properly working, uh, properly, you know, uh, working in this kind of range. So actually, for some of the sliding modes, you know, related papers, they are designing the, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, pure sliding mode, you know, uh, control uh, law, okay, which have uh, theoretically involved the input input saturation, uh, you know, issue in the whole control system. So in this case, we have to use some kinds of you know the uh, methods, okay, in theory from the theoretical side, to guarantee our closed loop control system, okay, uh, uh, can convert to zero, even when the system. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, meet even when the system experience the saturation situation. So this is, could be a very, you know, important and uh, interesting topic for the sliding mode control. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, research. Yeah. Thank you very much, Roy. Yes, that was the convincing answer. Yes. Yes. And yeah, yeah I got the points that yep. you have uh, no practically implemented the saturation block in your implementation so that yes, you... Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if some of you the... are very interested in designing the pure theory based, you know, sliding mode control, uh, you know, uh, methodology uh, with, uh, for the system, for the control system, uh, considering the input saturation, this could be a very promising and interesting topic to go. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. So is there uh, any more question? It seems that we don't have any. Yeah, no problem. So okay. I, I will put the, you know, this is my email address. Yeah. So if any of you have any, you know, question regarding the, you know, uh, the robotics and electronic systems, surrounding modes, control theory and applications, uh, please feel free to send me email. I will be very happy to uh, discuss with with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Hi, for uh, you know your interesting talk and you know being with us in this uh, webinar session. And thanks everybody for your uh, for attending in this uh, you know, in our first uh, webinar series. We will continue. You know. As I mentioned, with or scheduled monthly present uh, webinar, technical uh, webinar. The next one uh, is in the uh, end of the May, and we will post and advertise 
this by our uh, social media channels such as LinkedIn and uh, eNotice. Uh, thank you again for attending this session and have a good evening. Thank you, Amir. Thank you all. Thank and you. Have, have a lovely weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Take care.